Hello you guys, this is TheHeadphoneAddict.com and today I'm doing something I have been waiting for a long time which is to unbox the Objective 2 headphone amplifier and um, DAC. Now, a little short introduction on this thing uh, is the fact that the Objective 2 is uh, made out of, or based on a design of um, a guy who stirred up a lot of, should I say, controversy. I'm not sure if I would say it's controversy. Uh, basically, in audio, there are two groups, two main groups, the subjective people and the objective people. Now, the subjective people uh, go for uh, equipment that they think sound great to them. Whereas the objective people go to the equipment that measures well and uh, that is able to uh, produce measurements which indicates that the, the um, uh, products are uh, neutral, uh, i.e. not coloring the sound in any way, shape or form. And um, basically what uh, this guy NWAV guy did was he's uh, probably an engineer and uh, he um, posted at headfi.org that it was insane that all of these uh, hi-fi manufacturers uh, made uh, super expensive uh, headphone amplifiers, etc. And he uh, meant that uh, he was able to engineer something really cheap uh, that would outperform most of the competition. So the result of that was the fact that he made his designs and uh, published them uh, under open source licensing. So everybody who wants to can uh, take the designs he made and uh, basically uh, produce his uh, amplifier and uh, sell it. Uh, he did the same with a uh, DA converter and this unit has a DA converter inside. So. I've been wanting the O2 headphone amplifier and DAC for quite some time, uh, but uh, there is a reason why I haven't got it before until now. And uh, the reason for that is the fact that uh, all of the inputs on the, the most of them are on the front panel. So you have the power input on the front, etc., and it makes for a real mess. Uh, however, Mayflower Electronics, from which I bought this unit, has come up with um, their own modification of the design, which, put, which puts the power supply input at the rear. So uh, that pretty much makes you uh, makes the setup a lot more clean than uh, the competition. For instance, uh, the O2 uh, amplifier from JDS Designs. Okay, you guys, so let's pop this thing open. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. 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 I need to get a sharper knife. There we go. So not a fancy box, but who cares? I don't uh, like fancy boxes uh, like with the new Oppo headphones. You get this uh, extremely Super nice uh, wooden box, but how much of the production cost really went into that box? Uh, I prefer when the manufacturers uh, make all their efforts into the uh, headphones in and of themselves and not a box. So let's look inside of here. This is what you're met with. And a nice anti-static packaging. Really enjoy that when I got the Burson um, Modular DAC card. It was not even in a uh, anti-static package, and that is a shame. Especially considering that the Burson card is almost the same as this unit in and of itself. And you get a nice uh, long USB cable. 
which is fantastic. Got probably got a million of those already. Then I have received this thing, which is pretty much a um, step up converter because I live in Europe and we have 220 volts and uh, the power supply that uh, Tyler sent me is 110 volts for you guys in the US uh, and he was all out of 220 volt power supply so he sent me a step up transformer instead. So not as clean as he put it but still works. Then there is this power supply made in the beautiful Republic of China where just about 99.5% of everything is made nowadays. So that's basically all of the contents. So let's just have a look at um, what these things are. A power supply has probably been seen a million times before. Triad power supply, uh, 120 VAC, 60 Hertz, 4 watts output, 12 VACs at 200 milliamps. And the nice little step up converter. So this basically goes into the European plug and uh, there you have an input for uh, the American style plug. So that's all nice and dandy. I don't think I have to unwrap the USB cable. You guys are probably familiar with those. And off the anti-static packaging goes and out comes the start of the show, as Hi-Fi Guy 528 often states. So here it is, all black. I think that's wonderful. Let me just get a close-up shot of this beautiful little thingy right now. Okay, so here we have the beautifully black anodized aluminium O2 headphone amplifier from Mayflower Electronics. As you can see, it has white writing on the front panel, so a very nice and sharp contrast there. Furthermore, let's talk about the front panel. You can see that it has a power switch, which is basically a push button. Then you have an output for your headphones. So a headphone output with a small TRS jack. You can also get it with um, the bigger jack or TRS plug. So if you would like that, you can uh, make a order for it. And also worth mentioning about this output is the fact that it has a very low output impedance. And when something has a very low output impedance, that basically means that something called the dampening factor won't um, make your headphones less precise. It won't color the sound. It won't make the bass more uh, bloated. Uh, because uh, the dampening factor mainly affects the bass response as I have understood it. So very low output impedance which enables this to uh, work very well with uh, low impedance cans and efficient cans like uh, something like the Sennheiser Momentums or uh, the Denon AHD 7100s or the Denon AHD 7000s or something like that. So very good uh, with uh, the low output impedance. Furthermore, also worth mentioning uh, for us shallow people, notice that this has a yellow or maybe amber LED light on the front panel. And I really enjoy the fact that he has used amber because most products nowadays come with these awful blue LED lights. Even the Vioelectric HBA V200 does. And uh, I'm not a huge fan of the, the blue lead. So uh, quite great that uh, he has taken care of that and uh, installed a yellow or maybe amber lead. I think it looks very good with black. Also, we have the volume switch or sorry, volume potentiometer. So this is continuous. Sorry. This is continuous and it has quite a bit of resistance. Feels high quality. I am... Um, um, Assume that he has matched the potentiometers that went into his product so you don't have any channel imbalances. And that's important because some potentiometers that are low grade and have a high, uh, high tolerances uh, will give you uh, channel imbalances when you're listening at low levels. Um, one 
amp that in particular that comes to mind is um, the Asus Exoner Essence 1, which uh, was a great product, has had great value, etc. But unfortunately, they screwed up on the potentiometer side of things and there were channel imbalances both on the XLR outputs and the RCA outputs and the headphones output. So if you used very efficient cans on that, uh, you would have more sound in one channel than the other. So there was an imbalance and uh, uh, that sort of thing can make you go nuts. Okay, now on over to the gain switch. This is something I think that every headphone amplifier out there should have. The, headphone, uh, the gain switch uh, basically enables you more control over the volume knob because if you're using high efficiency cans, uh, which means they need little power to play really loud, uh, and you have a headphone amplifier that are uh, tweaked towards those headphones, you will basically have a lot of control so you can probably turn the knob and uh, put your precise volume uh, preference in. Whereas if you have put on some uh, low efficiency cans, which means they require more power to uh, play uh, louder, then you basically max out the volume knob and uh, you don't get it loud enough. So by having a gain switch, you basically plug in the gain switch if you're using an efficient cans and uh, you have more travel on the volume or less travel on the volume knob. So you can basically uh, tune in the desired volume of your preference. So I think all headphone amplifiers should have that. That makes it more versatile for a broader variety of headphones. Lastly, we have the input, which is also a uh, TRS-based small jack input. And um, this input is uh, basically analog, and uh, you would basically plug in something uh, from a RCA to TRS connector or small jack connector and just uh, plug it in there and it will work as a headphone amplifier for your preferred source, something like a CD player, for instance. Now you can also get this headphone amplifier with RCA jacks, but mine did not. And uh, the RCA jacks goes at the rear. So let's have a look at the rear of the unit. So here we have the rear of the unit. And as I said uh, in the introduction, my unit comes with an internal D to A converter. So uh, basically what that means is that I can use this as a uh, one, a concise system where I plug it into my computer through USB and I'm basically set to go. Uh, you can also, as I said, get a pair of RCA jacks at the rear of this unit and I think that's a great option. I uh, don't know if you can get both USB and RCA jacks but if I had known and uh, I'd been uh, uh, aware of that at the time of my uh, purchase, I would probably have gotten it because then it's um, uh, easier to use uh, some uh, quality cables from Blue Jeans Cable uh, to go with this. And then you have the power input. So that's basically uh, everything I have to say about the unboxing. I can't wait to hear this little beautiful thing. So that basically concludes my unboxing of the O2 headphone amplifier from uh, Mayflower Electronics. And uh, I'm really looking forward to try out this thing because uh, it has been uh, quite a, um, what should I say, uh, topic of interest. And uh, I've always wanted to hear it, but I thought, as I said in the introduction, that uh, most designs were uh, kind of uh, messy. And uh, this is uh, very concise, nice, and uh, I'm really looking forward to reviewing it for you guys and using it as a reference uh, headphone amplifier in uh, the lower spectrum of uh, budgets. So I will basically compare it to the Asus Sonar Essence uh, one and uh, Asus Exoner Essence ST sound card, which I've also got. So those are uh, similar, similarly priced, and um, I will see who comes out on top. I will also uh, compare it towards uh, my maybe favorite, which is the Violectric HBA V200. Uh, that's at least my present favorite. So that's what I'm going to do and uh, just to roll this thing off I would like to say that 
you can go to Mayflower Electronics website and um, get this. Okay, thank you. I love you all. You are beautiful. Goodbye, guys.